Hi there. This is a very quick video. I decided to create this video on the back of seeing an image posted on Facebook by a friend of mine who's also a fellow photographer. Now he took a photograph of the same location as this. this Martindale on the east side of Ullswater in the Lake District for those of you who aren't familiar with it it's a beautiful part of the world it's very quiet uh, secluded it's gorgeous absolutely beautiful now it does tend to avoid a lot of the tourists and, and various other people now having seen his image I then posted my version which is what you see here and he was quite interested in how I composed the scene because it is different to his. So I said, foolishly, that I would create a little video kind of explaining my thought processes behind this image. Now, some of you will have seen this image before, some of you will not have. It is, to my mind, one of the trickiest images I've had to shoot in the last two years, compositionally. And I say that because when we as photographers arrive on site, we're overwhelmed by landscape. There's so much beauty out there to photograph. It's really, really difficult to get the camera to hone in on just the elements that we want to photograph. And I guess we work differently to painters. Painters will create from a blank canvas and they will build up to an image, whereas photographers have to exclude and sort of dissect an image really to the very core of what they're actually wanting to photograph. Now, when I arrived at this scene, October 2015, so it'd be almost two years ago, amazingly enough, must have spent 20 minutes walking up and down. Put the camera bag down, the tripod down, and I just wandered up and down within an 80, 90, maybe 100 foot section of road. The issue that I had was that the scene was very busy, which isn't unusual in landscape photography. And it seemed to me that whatever, wherever I stood and with whatever lens I had on, it just didn't quite capture the scene that I saw. So it took me 20 minutes basically to settle on this composition. And I personally, I love this composition. I think it's, I think, it's one of my favorites. I think it's got a lot of me in this, uh, in this particular image. So I said I'd just dissect it, so I will. And I'm gonna do it with a marker pen because I'm not prissy. I'm quite happy to uh, scribble all over my images. So we have many different elements here. We have two trees on our left-hand side. We've got a dark one and a light one. We've got the main tree on the left third, which is quite dark. We've also got a stone barn here with a tree above it, a stone barn here with a tree to the right. We've also got a diagonal slope coming in from the top right hand corner. Nothing in the top left except a little bit of mist. It was very misty. It was, the light was very ethereal. It was beautiful, very, very soft, very subtle. It kind of masked a lot of what was behind. So a lot in the foreground, the trees would stand out quite often during misty conditions you can isolate subjects so you can go back to a scene in the autumn and in the winter when you know it's quite misty in order to get a particular tree or a particular building or what have you um, the other elements in this image are the stream bottom left hand corner the little wooden bridge and the cattle so really there was quite a lot there to take into consideration let's say now I will start by saying that as an image, and you may disagree, and probably will, the most important element of this image are those two trees. Now, quite often that is the case. The smallest element of an image happens to be probably the most important, probably because it's the least obvious. Now, when I set this scene up, 
I was quite careful to try and isolate as many, if not all of the subjects as possible. Now, for those of you that have seen my pier shots, my jetties, my wooden jetties, wooden pier shots, certainly on long exposure, I like the pier isolated. So I want the pier and I want water all the way around it. And then the headland in the distance, the trees, the mountain, whatever, has to be separate. It has to sit higher than the pier posts. And in a way, the biggest challenge I had with this image was getting everything in its place and not overlapping and getting in each other's way. So for me, the light was coming down from the left hand side, illuminating the image from left to right. It's obviously behind this tree, hence why the tree is quite dark. Now, it is lighting up this tree here, the second one in from the left, leaving the one on the left hand side dark. So I love that contrast between dark tree and light trees. It, the, the, the light sort of gives it a, an extra 3D dimension, I think. And what I've got here is I have a gap here and I have a gap here. So the gap from the side of the print or the side of the frame to the left tree is the same as from the right hand side of the right tree to the big tree. And I do like symmetry. I may have a, a certain level of OCD, although I've yet to meet a photographer that hasn't, but they sit evenly and centrally within the, the space that they've got. And I love the recession. I just think it's absolutely wonderful. There is a lighter tree behind the darker tree, but it's not terribly noticeable. This tree had to sit in its own space and not touch this stone barn or that tree had to sit within its own space and there's a talking millimeters of a gap between this branch and that stone building it was so incredibly tight if you step back a little bit that will change the perspective if you step forward that will also do the same we're on a road on a bridge that goes over the stream so we're very limited for space you can't get back more than 10 feet on the road so you're very limited in where you can stand I also wanted this building here separate from this tree. So I wanted a gap here and it's the same size as the gap here. So the gap here is the same as the gap between the building and the tree. And also the light coming in from the left hand side, it's obviously lighting up the roof and the front of the building or the back of the building, whichever side it happens to be lighting it up on, but on the left hand side. So it gives the building more prominence rather than the building standing out in the shade. I think you can get away with a dark object in the front of the image, but when you start to go further back through the image, I think those subjects need to be lit in order to be seen, otherwise they kind of get a little lost. You've got some beautiful light here on the trees, and they are being illuminated beautifully. There's a little bit of light here, but not very much at all. No light here, because it's obviously misty. And you've got the stream coming in, from the bottom left hand corner. Now that was quite important for me. Um, I could have stood a couple of feet to the left, a couple of feet to the right, and it would have affected the whole composition. As it was, it fitted beautifully to bring you in from the left hand side. You've got a lovely tree, that, uh, wooden bridge there, which isn't terribly noticeable, but because of the light behind the bridge, you can see the side supports of the bridge. Whereas if it had been quite dark, that bridge would have disappeared. Two cattle. Now, I will admit, the black one is perfect. The white one, no. Personally, when I first saw the scene, the white one was here and it was facing to the left, facing to the tree. And that suited me just fine. The problem with cattle is the damn things move. Move. That's as funny as I'm getting. So by the time I set the shot up, it had moved into the position just going out of the frame. But there is enough space, but literally 10 seconds later, it would have been off. And actually, the dark cow is so devoid of any detail really, that I think I needed the black and white one to at least sort of balance things out a little bit. Um, and it does give you a little bit of detail, but it also, gives the place some perspective as well and, and, and it sort of uh, an environment which you would expect to see cattle. So that's it really. Um, 
you know, everybody's got an opinion. Some people may say that I should have got maybe a crop a little, maybe an inch a little higher to get rid of this light. But I actually quite like the light here. I love the light on the far grasses. I just think it's a lovely image of a beautiful, beautiful place. But you've got to go at the right time of day. Uh, you've got to go at the right time of the year, which tends to be October, November. Autumnal colours are coming out. And there's, you know, few places better in the world than the Lake District. Uh, you could argue Maine and sort of New England in America, which I must get to one day. I must get to. Um, but as an image, yes, I think that works particularly well. So I said that I would just do a little evaluation on a particular image. If you found it quite useful, write something in the comment box below. This will only go on Facebook. It's not going on my YouTube channel. If you want to go on my YouTube channel, just type in Melvin Nicholson Photography and I'm loitering there with intent. That's it. Job done. I shall uh, go and have a brew now. Um, any questions? Ask them in the comments box. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.